Hi everyone, it's Ben from Trek It and I'm out here with Harry in Oxwich Bay today. Beautiful out today, a little bit windy, that's why I've got the dead cat on. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Keb 52 rucksack from Fjordhaven. This will be a bit of an inside look video, so we'll run through what it's made from, its features, what we think it's really designed for, and anything else that we really like about the pack. So stay tuned to find out a little bit more about the Keb 52. So first and foremost, what is the Keb 52? Well, the Keb 52 is Fjallraven's trekking pack, or at least from their trekking line, hence being part of the Keb family, which is for the slightly more adventurous side of Fjallraven. So I'm wearing a set of the Keb trousers today. So the Keb family is designed more around trekking, sort of longer distance use. And the 52, funnily enough, refers to the capacity. So at 52 litres, this is your ideal sort of backpacking bag if you're aiming to take a little bit less with you or maybe you're going out for slightly shorter, shorter durations. But this bag is designed around trekking and also potentially a little bit of ski touring, things like that. So there are a few features that are designed around using this in sort of a, a Swedish winter. Not necessarily something that we'd need so much in the UK, unless you're sort of up in Scotland doing a bit of potential ski touring up there. But there are a lot of features on this bag that mean that you can use it for ski touring, hiking, trekking, all that sort of thing. And it's just a really nicely designed bag that will get you through it. So as with most things Fjallraven, the Keb 52 is predominantly made from G1000. This particular flavour that they use on this bag here is G1000 Heavy Duty, but it's the Eco version. And it's also the Smooth version, so there's an S after that as well. The Heavy Duty refers to the extra durability that's afforded to this fabric, so it's nice and abrasion resistant. The S also helps with that because that means it's smooth, uh, so it's less likely to catch and snag on things. But the eco element of that refers to the fact that it is 65% recycled polyester and 35% organic cotton, which means it's just a little bit more of a sustainable choice for a rucksack upper. That is also mixed in with this bag. It's a bit easier to see with a close-up, which will mix into this footage, but you also have a 400 denier waterproof nylon on the sides, on top of the lid and on the base of this pack. That's just there for additional durability in areas where you might need it and the sides have that nylon on to be a little bit more abrasion resistant if you're running skis in this setup, because you've got big straps on the side that are capable of taking skis if you're ski touring. So that nylon is just there for a little bit more abrasion resistance than the G1000, because uh, if you use G1000 all over this pack, it would still certainly work, but the nylon, Fjallraven have and found, just works a little bit better in that application. Moving around to the back, you also have mixed in with this, the birchwood on the frame, which we'll talk a little bit more about when we're talking about the back system, but you've got sustainably sourced birch wood on the back frame here, which one looks really cool. I think it looks really nice. It just keeps things very simple, but it's also a more sustainable choice than using aluminium and other such things as part of the framing for this bag. So now we're in close up, you can see the difference between the weave of the two fabrics, slightly different in color, but this nylon here, which also features down the sides of the pack and at the bottom, uses Fjallraven's Berg shell, which is what makes it waterproof. So we'll talk a little bit about the back system. And I will also mention that we are fighting the tide at the moment. Harry chose this spot. So not only is it infested with limpets, so it's kind of painful to sit on, but the tide is about six feet that way. So we've got to be quick with this one. But the back system of this bag, again, lies on Fjallraven's choice to go simple, but very functional. So as we mentioned in the previous section about what it's made from, you've got these birchwood pieces here which are removable replaceable should you break one and they are pre-bent so they should help follow the curves of your back nicely and then you've got a very simple adjustment panel on the back and this section will slide up and down so it will accommodate a variety of back shapes sizes lengths so it'll run from something like myself that has quite quite a long back quite a long torso to someone who is considerably shorter and it will still feel comfortable to carry and all the points of adjustment that you have with that along with load stabilizing straps you have a chest strap or sternum strap with a little whistle on it as well, which is always useful for an emergency. And you have a cutout section effectively here that allows for more breathability, more ventilation. So when you are out walking, carrying a little bit more load, you're gonna be a little bit warmer, potentially sweating a little bit more. So that extra breathability that's afforded by physically having a gap here, but still having good lumbar support and things like that, really means that the bag is very comfortable to carry. 
Another key component of any large rucksack is the hip belt. And Fiora have chosen to pre-curve theirs. So it's got a slight twist to it, which is designed to help sit on your pelvis a little bit better. And it's also nice and cushioned, but still quite firm. So it feels very planted when you've got it on. And then you do have hip belt pockets, which are easily accessible for snacks. Always a win. And they've got a very large range of adjustment. And they've also got it so that you actually tighten the belt when it's on rather than having to fiddle and sort of pull backwards or anything because some rucksacks will have the adjusters going the other way but the webbing straps on this allow you to pull to tighten it so you start off with it loose and tighten up it is also adjustable at the back here so that you can have a little bit more movement in the pack so if your hips sway a little bit more you can adjust to a little bit more movement or you can have the packs a little bit more solid by tightening those in a little bit more so i've got the back system in quite a low position at the moment which is towards the bottom end of its range. So if you've got a shorter torso, that will work. And you've got this webbing strap running along the back here. You've got this metal toggle at the top and you can lift it up. But first, as I forgot, there is a little clip behind here. So you've got a little plastic clip there. So you can tension this off and that allows the whole back system to slide up. You then put the clip back in place click it in and then it prevents the back system from sliding back down. So it's just running around a metal eyelet at the bottom here and it just slides up and down. It's the sort of thing that you should only really need to do once when you first set the pack up. And we're now rapidly running out of time because the sea is winning. Um, it's pouring in through a hole over there. So we're gonna maybe move to a different position and show you more about the bag. So we've loaded this pack up with a little bit of weight now. We've taken out the stunt items and put in some real weight. And I've been using this bag for a few days on and off to get a better feel for it. It is very comfortable, it's easy to adjust, and just very simple and straightforward to, to get to fit, and works quite well if you're changing the weight and items you've got in it. The only thing that I will say about it is that when you initially put it on, the hip fins do feel a little bit on the stiff side. They take a little while to sort of soften up a little bit, but they do get more comfortable, and they provide a good amount of support. The other thing I really like about this pack is just how breathable it is. So I do have a full gap behind me. So I can feel this nice sea breeze rushing through, which means it's nice and, nice and breathable and still very comfortable. Jaravan have just used a really simple tried and true design on this that just works very well. It's comfortable, supportive, easy to carry a good amount of weight on it. What more do you need? So we've got the top pocket on the lid here, which contains the rain cover, which you can chuck on if you need to. Just if it is really tipping it down, you can't necessarily rely on G1000 to keep the bag completely dry for a sustained period. It is highly weather resistant, but not fully waterproof. But that's why Fair haven't include that rain cover there. There is also still room in this pocket for other quick access things. So it's a nice, easy, accessible pocket there. So you've got a big front pocket on this, which has YKK zips. All of the zips on this bag are YKK and they're all designed to be compatible with gloves and mitts. So you've got nice big toggles to pull on. So this is a big stash pocket at the front. I've got a fleece in there today, um, but there is also a drainage hole at the bottom here, right at the bottom there. So if you put a tent fly sheet, a waterproof jacket, something like that in there, it will drain out from the bottom so it doesn't saturate the inside of the pack. But inside this main pocket, take out that fleece. You have an elasticated pocket here and then an internal zip pocket as well, which is a little bit smaller, but useful for storing a mobile phone and again, quick access accessories there, which is a really nice size pocket that you can stash quick access goods in. So we've got two hip belt pockets, one on either side. They are nylon topped and then they've got a bit of stretch to them, not masses, but it means that you can overstuff these pockets to get a few more snacks in there. They're a nice size. They're not quite big enough for a mobile phone, but they will fit snacks and sort of snack bars, that sort of thing in there quite easily. So nice and easy to access. And again, YKK zips that are designed to be used with gloves on those pulls. So you've got a bottle, there, a bottle? You've got a bottle pocket on both sides. So I've got a, a Yeti in this one here and it is adjustable. So you've got two adjustment points on it. So you can have a much larger pocket that also means it's easier to get your bottle out of. I take that adjustment strap off as well but it also means that you can get larger things in there, or if you're not using it, you can cinch it away. So I can stick that back in there, and if I pull the right one, that's to loosen it. Pull those toggles back tight, 
and it prevents your bottle from moving around. And if you're not using them, you can have them completely flush into the side so that they're not getting in the way. So I mentioned at the start of the video, there are a few features that are more ski touring specific. You have big straps running down the external sides of the bag with that nylon material there. So a little bit more reinforcement for where you'd have skis, potentially ski bindings. But these straps are sized to the extent that you can really open them out fully to get skis, bindings, anything else in here you might want. You could put a tent in here and that works then in comparison, in comparison, in conjunction with that expandable pocket for bottles, things like that there. The lid of this pack is extendable. So you've got buckles front and back. So I can't really see them on the other side, but you've got one there and you should have one here. But these buckles also mean that you can fully unclip the pack. So unclip it completely. I'm not going to because I don't want it to fall into the sea. Um, but that does then mean that you have a quick grab bag here. If you just need small supplies to take with you, you can carry that with you or just leave it at home completely because you don't necessarily need this. And you can just run the pack without a top on it. So moving inside the pack, you can undo the front two and it still functions like a normal lid. You can keep the lid on and extend it and stash things under the front there. So a tent or sleeping bag, roll mat, something like that as well. But you have a zipped pocket on the inside here with a key clip. Just useful extra storage. And if you are included, a little name tag. So you can put your name and contact details in there as well, just in case you lose your Keb 52. Hopefully they'll be able to get it back to you. But then what we're looking to do is undo this toggle here. And there are a few ways that you can enter the pack. That was quite satisfying the way that pinged off, just as an aside. So you have a toggle for top entry running through for the top so you can just jump straight into the main pack if you don't need all of that capacity you can do that toggle back up and there is a secondary toggle here that you can cinch in to reduce capacity again so that would cinch in there like that and then you can clip in with the buckle and that's the way that you would really run this pack if you weren't using the lid if you'd strip that off other ways that you can enter this pack though you have bottom entry through that reinforced nylon bottom. So you've got big chunky zips that open up into the main capacity. As with the other rucksack videos that we filmed recently, this is a stunt rucksack, so it's filled with things to make it look like it's full. So there's actually another rucksack and a sleeping bag in here. But that enters the big main compartment. And you also have, I can zip this back up, which I'm struggling with, mainly because I'm propping it up on my own knee while the sea encroaches once again. That's where I was sat and it's now in the sea. There we are. Uh, you do also have, if I get the right side, which I haven't, because it's on this side, a big old zip for side entry. So you have these compression straps running down the side, which you can fully open out, but then you've got this nice zip that runs down into the pocket and again into the main compartment of the pack. So that about wraps up the Keb 52. Hopefully this video has given you a little bit of an insight into what it is, what it does, why I personally really like it. I genuinely think I am gonna take this on the Fjallraven Classic just because, well, it looks really cool and it functions really well. You know, rule number one, you've got to look good. Um, function comes second. But as, as far as a rucksack goes, it's incredibly durable. It's nice and streamlined design and it really just works. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this particular pack, there'll be a link down in the description below. As always, we'd appreciate any likes or comments you have about anything we're doing on the channel or across our socials or anything you'd like to see in the future. If you have any questions for Harry about why he chose to take us here to film, please put them in the comments down below and he'll get back to you. But that's it for me. I'm going to try and run away from the sea now before we get stuck somewhere and uh, enjoy the rest of Oxwich Bay. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.